Hello everyone, welcome to my class. Today we will uh, talk about nodal planes and system of thin lenses. Okay, as a revision, in uh, last class we talked about uh, thick and thin lenses and thereafter uh, we learn what is the unit planes and uh, while learning unit planes we came to know that uh, unit planes are planes which gives unit magnification. Okay. Apart from the unit plane there are several other planes and one of them is nodal plane which we will uh, talk about today and thereafter we will move to system of thin lenses. We will analyze the system of thin lenses and will uh, uh, derive an expression for uh, focal, uh, focal length of the combination of the two lenses. Now, uh, before introducing you nodal planes, let us define what are nodal uh, points. Nodal points are two points on the axis which have a relative angular magnification of unity. Yeah. Now, in case of you, uh, unit planes, the magnification was unity, but here it is relative angular magnification. Yeah, the magnification here the magnification is angular magnification, and in the case of unit planes, it was linear magnification. Yeah, the usual magnification. The usual magnification was unity in case of unit planes and now in case of uh, nodal plane it is angular magnification which is unity. What does the angular magnification means? Angular magnification means if a ray falls at a uh, nodal point and this ray makes an angle alpha with respect to the axis of the system, then the ray will emerge from the other nodal point which is on the other side of the uh, optical system and this emerging ray will also subtend an angle alpha with respect to the axis, the horizontal axis. Well, this is what it is uh, explained here. A ray striking the first point at an angle emerges from the second point at the same angle. Yeah? Nodal points are two points. Okay? And uh, if a ray falls on one of the nodal points, then the emergent ray will emerge from the another nodal point, the second nodal point, but the angles would be the same. Yeah, this is what it is uh, written here. A ray striking the first point at an angle emerges from the second point at the same angle. Now, here in the figure you can see that the n1 represents the first nodal point and n2 represents the second no nodal point and this is an optical system. Okay. Now, a ray which falls at first nodal point n1 at angle alpha as per the definition of this uh, uh, nodal points, it will emerge from the second nodal point n2 at the same angle alpha. Okay, the angle will not change. Okay. Now, the planes which pass through these points and normal to the axis are known as nodal planes. Now, once n1 and n2 are defined, we will draw planes which are perpendicular to the axis of the system and these planes are termed as nodal planes. Okay. Now, the distance of this nodal plane from the left uh, refracting surface is designated by d n 1 and since this distance is uh, on uh, uh, left hand side of the refracting surface, we have placed uh, a minus sign before d n 1, while the distance of the second nodal plane from the right uh, refracting surface is designated by d n 2 and this uh, since it is on the right hand side therefore, that this distance is a positive quantity okay, plus sign is there. Okay, have a, having understood this, we will uh, start from equation number 33 which we derived in our previous classes and this equation number 33 was derived for objects which are sitting on the axis of the system. Okay. For axial objects, we will we can safely substitute x1 is equal to x2 
is equal to 0. And we also assume that on the left and right hand side of the optical system, the refractive index is the same and is equal to that of the air. Okay, therefore, n1 is equal to n2 is equal to 1. Under these conditions, we have this uh, matrix equation which is nothing but our equation number 33 which we derived in our previous classes. Now, from this uh, matrix equation, we can get an expression for lambda 2. We will expand this matrix to get the expression of lambda 2 and if we expand it, then you see that the lambda 2 has this expression. Okay, after substituting x1 is equal to x2 is equal to 0 and n1 is equal to n2 is equal to 1, we will get this expression for lambda 2. We, I have just expanded this matrix equation and the first term will give you the lambda 2 expression. Okay. Once this lambda 2 is known, we know that we see that there is a term d1 which is appearing here in the second uh, second term on right hand side this d1 is nothing but dn1 okay distance of the nodal plane now in this particular case lambda 2 will now be related with uh, a11 and uh, minus a12 dn1 and then outside of the bracket we have lambda 1 and this is how uh, we get equation number 64. Now, for nodal points lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2, this is also valid and once we substitute lambda 1 equal to lambda 2, then equation 64 gives this expression. Yeah, From 64 we get this a11 minus a12 into dn1 is equal to 1 and from here we can easily get the expression for the distance of the nodal point from the refracting surface, particularly from the left refracting surface. And we see that d n 1 is equal to a 1 1 minus 1 by a 1 2. Here a 1 1 and a 1 2 are nothing but the matrix element of 2 by 2 system matrix. Okay? Now, this d n 1 is usually equal to d u 1. Okay, I repeat d n 1 is equal to d u 1 and what is d u 1? d u 1 is the distance of the unit plane. Okay. d n 1 is the distance of the nodal plane from the refracting surface and d u 1 is the distance of the unit plane from the refracting surface. And in case where n 1 is equal to n 2 is equal to 1, d u 1 is equal to d n 1, this is what we see because we have already derived the expression for d n 1 and d, d u 1 have the same expression what d n 1 has. Okay. d n 1 is equal to therefore, d u 1. Similarly, we can get the expression for d n 2 and we will see that d n 2 is equal to d u 2 which is equal to 1 minus a 2 2 by a 1 2, okay. which means that when the medium on the either side of the optical system have the same refractive index, the nodal planes coincide with the unit planes. Okay. If the medium on the left hand side and on the right hand side of the optical system is the same, then nodal plane coincides with the unit planes. Now, in this slide, uh, the, uh, the points n1 and n2 which are your nodal points and the plane which is passing through n1 and n2 which are your nodal planes, they are outside of the optical system. But it may also so happen that they reside inside the optical system. Okay. Suppose this is the boundary of the optical system okay, and this is our axis okay. and suppose our, uh, this n1 is here and n2 is here, then what will happen? Array which will which is directed towards n1 
it will emerge from N2, yeah. But within the medium, there would be some refraction, sorry. Yeah, and uh, uh, within the medium, we can join these two lines here. Yeah. Now, what we see that a ray which appears to be directed towards N, N1, it appears to be emerging from N2 in this particular case, where N1 and N2 both are within the optical system. Okay, this is what exactly happens. Now, you can see that this angle, which we assume to be alpha, is equal to this angle, angle of emergence. Yeah. Then, therefore, irrespective of whether N1 and N2 are inside or nodal uh, planes are inside the optical system or outside the optical, si optical system, they preserve the property of unit angular magnification. Okay. And as long as the media outside the optical system is uh, are same, media means the media, medium on the right hand side and the medium on, uh, on the left hand side of the optical system are, uh, are the same, the, uh, uh, we will get uh, coincidence of nodal planes and unit planes. Nodal planes will fall exactly uh, uh, at the same position where unit planes appear. Okay. Once this is uh, understood, we will uh, next move to the next topic which wherein we will analyze a system of two thin, thin lenses. Here in this case, we will consider two thin lenses. Thin lenses has their uh, usual definition which we have already talked about and these two thin lenses are separated by certain distance. Okay. These lenses have their own focal length which may be different and they are separated by certain distance and we assume in this case that this distance is t. Okay. We can draw the figure schematically here. Suppose this is our one of the lens and this is our second lens okay. and the separation between the two lenses is t and the focal length of first lens is n1 while the focal length of second lens is f2. Now, the, uh, we will analyze this system using a uh, matrix method, the matrix formalism and try to get an expression for the focal length of the combined system, the combination of the two lenses. Okay. Now, uh, these things are described here. We are considering two thin lenses whose focal lengths are given by f1 and f2 and they are separated by a distance t. Okay. Now, these are the two lenses, therefore, the, what would lenses uh, do is that they refract the rays. Okay. Therefore, we can write the refraction matrix for first lens and for second lens. Yeah, this is for the refraction matrix for first lens and this is refraction matrix for second lens. This term represent A12, this is the second term on the first row, in the first row. Okay. And the second term in first row which is A12, we know that this is equal to 1 by minus of 1 by f. Therefore, for the first lens we can write, we can replace f by f1 and we will have minus 1 by f1, while for the second uh, lens we have minus 1 by f2. Okay. Once we have matrices for lens 1 and lens, lens 2, what is left is the matrix, matrix for translation of the ray between the two lenses. Okay. We know that the two lenses are separated by distance t, there, therefore a ray which is falling on lens 1 after getting refracted through lens 1, it will travel through the distance t and to uh, uh, represent this uh, translation, we again use the translation matrix which is again a 2 by 2 matrix and how to write this translation matrix, this translation, uh, we know that translation matrix is represented by this expression where d is the distance and is the refractive index and since these two lenses are kept in air, the refractive index n would be equal to 1 and d here is equal to t. 
the separation between the two lenses. Therefore, the translation matrix in this case would be this 1 0 T 1. Okay. Once we have matrices for two lenses and the, the translation between the two lenses, uh, we can write the system matrix for whole system. Okay. Therefore, the system matrix would be uh, the multiplication of matrix multiplication of the three matrices. Okay. This is the matrix, matrix for lens first lens, this is for translation and this is the matrix for lens two second lens. Okay. Now, after uh, uh, multiplication, we get this 2 by 2 matrix, which is our system matrix and we see that in this system matrix, we have 4 terms here. There are 2 uh, columns and 2 rows. Okay. The first term is A11, second term is uh, A12, the third term is A21 and the fourth term is A22 which are re written here yeah a11 is equal to 1 minus t by f2 a22 is equal to minus 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 minus t by f1 f2 and so on yeah now a12 is equal to minus 1 by f f is the focal length of the combination yeah it's uh, as per the derivations we did in our previous classes we know that this term would be equal to m minus 1 by f Okay. Therefore, we introduce a focal length of the combination and this focal length would be equal to minus of inverse of A12 okay. and therefore, we get this formula. Okay. The focal length of the combination is in, in equation number 70, the focal length of the combination is related to the focal length of the two lenses and the separation between the two lenses. Okay. Now, once the uh, expression for the uh, focal length of the combination is known, we can also uh, write down the expression for the distances of unit planes. Okay. These are the expression for the uh, distances of the unit planes, which is equal to T f by f 2 for du1 while for du2 du2 it would be minus tf by f1 okay here what we did is that we just uh, substituted in the usual expression of the uh, distance of unit plane which we derived in our previous classes we just substituted uh, these a's into uh, that expression and this gave us uh, the final expression of du1 and du2 for the combination of the two lenses okay and thus we saw that using uh, matrices, we can very easily calculate the expression of the combination of lenses and also can calculate the expression for the unit planes, the distances of the unit planes. Now, we will take an uh, example on this. Okay. In this, the statement of this uh, example or the problem statement is, consider a lens a lens combination in a state, yeah? consider a lens combination consisting of a convex lens and the focal length of the convex lens is plus 15 centimeter okay? and the second lens is concave lens yeah? and the focal length of the concave lens is minus 20 centimeter and these two lenses are separated by 25 centimeter. Okay. We have a combination of two lenses, one lens, uh, one lens, is, con uh, lens is a convex lens whose focal length is plus 15 centimeter while the second lens is a con concave lens whose focal length is minus 20 centimeter. Okay. The focal length of convex lenses are uh, always positive while the focal length of concave lenses are negative okay. and these, these two lenses are separated by 25 centimeter in the given combination. Okay. What is being asked? Determine the system matrix elements and the position of the unit plane. Okay. This is what is being asked. Okay. Now, we will have to first determine the system matrix elements. What would be the system matrix element? We will go back to our uh, in previous slide. We know that system matrix elements are given by a11, a12, a21 and a22 and whose expressions are given here by equation number 69. We will substitute for
r t f 2 f 1 and so on in equation number 69 and this will give us the matrix element the requisite the required max matrix element and therefore a 1 1 here t is uh, 25 centimeter f 2 is given which is minus 20 so you, if you substitute for these two parameters you get the value of a 1 1 similarly the a 1 2 would be equal to minus 0 0.1 a 2 1 would be equal to 25 a 2 2 would be, would be equal to minus 2 by 3 once all the elements all the matrix elements are known we can easily calculate the focal length of the system how just take the inverse of the a 1 2 term and put a minus sign before it and which is exactly what is done here and the focal length f would be equal to minus of a 1 2 and what is a 1 2 a 1 2 is equal to minus 0 0.1 if you substitute minus 0 0.1 in place of a 1 2 then you will get 10 centimeter and therefore focal length of the system of uh, lenses is 10 centimeter what is uh, next which is being asked the next thing which is being asked in the question is the position of unit planes how to get the position of unit plane again we will use the formula which is derived earlier du1 which is the uh, position of the first unit plane unit plane which is given by tf by f2 just substitute for tf and f2 you get the position of first unit plane substitute again for tf and f2 and this will give you the position of the second unit plane okay this is how we can easily calculate the position of unit plane, the matrix elements, focal length, very easy. Okay. Therefore, uh, we can uh, see that uh, um, this matrix uh, formalism makes our life very easy. Yeah? It removes all the complex complexity, which is usually uh, related, which is uh, related with the the ray tracing and the focal length finding, image formation, and all. Now this is all for this class and thank you for listening me and we will see in next class.